Again, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve. How are we in this moment? Are we anxious to get home and attend to things that we uh, have not yet finished? Maybe. I promise to go no more than an hour on the message, so you will be okay. You should get home, yeah, an hour and a half or so. No. Can we just, everybody just take one moment and yell out Merry Christmas as if we want to raise the roof. Bring some excitement here. Ready? One, two, three. Merry Christmas! All right, I like it. Before I forget, because um, I may forget at the end, uh, Nathan Holozowski worked very hard at getting the, the concert band up, you know, and up and running and, and doing this, this wonderful um, music for us. So, Nathan, thank you very much. And it will be our theme today, but I want to take just a little different turn on it. I mean, light does many things, and most often when we talk about it here on Christmas Eve, we talk about it illuminating. We talk about truth being illuminated in Jesus Christ, about the Word of God being illuminated in Jesus Christ. But it does other things too. It warms, right? Where light is, there's warmth. And when it's cold out, you seek warmth. So just as you might see light in the seek light in the darkness, you seek warmth when it's cold. But light also does something else. It directs. It points to. Like if you think about a flashlight with a, with a real focused beam and you're looking for something and you shine it in. Or a lighthouse maybe would be a better analogy, right? And, and the lighthouse shines on things you want to stay away from, but it also clears the path for the, the way you want to go. Um, I was thinking about fireworks. You know when they first go up, right? You just see this. And you know where to look in the sky because you can see this light beam go up. And as soon as it turns black for a second, you know the big bang is about to come out. Just I was always thinking about light directing on. I thought about the Olympic torch. I know this is probably an odd illustration to go with on Christmas Eve, but I'm going to talk about the Olympics, only briefly. And I thought about the people that bear the torch for the Olympics, and how they travel around, right, around the around the stadium there, and they bring the light all the way, bring the flame all the way up and light the Olympic torch. What I did not know, now you probably all know this, or are going to think, isn't this obvious, Pastor Ryan, how did you not know it? They probably announce it at the beginning of every Olympics, but I just didn't pay any attention. I did not realize that since this tradition started in 1936, the flame is carried from Olympia, Greece, right? All the way to whatever host city is carrying it that or is hosting it that year. Okay? And I didn't know that. I thought they just, you know, somewhere in the back, right, under the, the garage, somebody's starting to light, and next thing you know, it's running into the stadium. I didn't realize it was going all that way. And it started in 1936 to do this. And what they've done is they they've made it kind of a witness to the history of the games. So the great athletes of the past would often carry the torch on its final run up until they light the big flame. So it points. It points back to the history of the original Olympic Games in Greece, but it also looks forward to the modern cities of today carrying out this tradition, and many have had the honor of carrying the torch. Well, the Bible tells us of a first witness to the light and the flame of Christ. Someone who ran before him, before Christ came to, to give us hope, to give us our, a place where our minds and our hearts and our spirits could be ready. So when that flame hit, it was like an ignition switch went off. And that person is John, John the Baptist, a great athlete, if you will, who ran the race for the Lord. And it says, we always read, all, every year at the Christmas Eve, we read the beginning of the book of John. But we often don't talk about John the Baptist's role. And for me today, it's important that you hear his role and identify with it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light. 
that the light glows, but it needs people who testify to it, people who prepare hearts for it, people who witness the light, who witness the light in their own life, but also give witness to others about the light, that all might believe through him. See, the light has a goal, that all might believe. Not just the people gathered and assembled here, but people who carry the torch, carry the flame, be witnesses of the light, so that all might believe and profess the glory of the Lord. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. A man sent from God, and it says in verse 9 that the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. But then in the next verse it says, he was in the world, past. Not only is he coming, but he was already in the world, and the world was even made through him, yet the world did not know him. And John the Baptist took this spark, this almost unrecognizable ember of light that many missed. This light was in the world before, the world was made through this light. John the Baptist carried that small flame and ask people to get their hearts right. You know, and as we are thinking about Christmas tomorrow, in this pre-Christmas moment, there's a place to stop and say, get your mind right. Get your heart right. Get your spirit right. There's a place to carry a little torch. In a little while, we're going to grab a candle and pass it all around, right? And, and you've got to look at that light, and you've got to not only see the light of Jesus Christ, but you've got to see your own hand and your own face shining and glowing from the light and recognize your role and my role to carry that light, to hold that light, to, that it reflects not just our face, but something deeper within, something that points beyond us. And we can say, no, we're not the light, but this light makes my face shine. This light makes me shine. John the Baptist was used in this role to take from what was a twinkling ember, a spark, a small torch, and get people's heart burning with embers, waiting to be set ablaze with the light of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. I ask us to think about this role. Think about people on this Christmas who are waiting to have the flame of Jesus Christ set ablaze in them. And I suspect that there are people here whose light feels like a small ember, or maybe a small flame, and maybe they remember when it used to burn really bright. And they're waiting for that ignition again. And I bet you there's even people here who don't know where they stand because maybe this is part of their tradition just to come, but they don't even, they, they haven't given testimony or witness to the Lord. But I also know that there's people here who want to share that light. Because that light is the light of their life. And I want you to know that all are welcome here. There are people waiting to have that light become recognizable, waiting to be warmed by its glow, waiting for some direction. Think about the three things that we said light does, right? It illuminates, and maybe they're here because they want illumination in their life because it feels like it's falling apart. Maybe they're here because it feels cold outside. I don't mean literally, you know that too, but figuratively. Maybe life feels frigid and harsh by the winter. Maybe there's some who are waiting for direction and looking for a beam of light to shine down and illuminate and tie them to the work of God in their life. The work of God that since the dawn of time said, let there be light, and there was light. The work of God that took a star over Bethlehem and shone it on the place of the manger. And now maybe they're asking, Lord, is there a light that can shine on me? Can Christ be birthed in my heart? And I bet you there's people who say, look, I'm not a regular attender. Christmas Eve, we get a lot of people who may not be regular attenders. Is there room in this inn for me? Is there room in the parking lot for me? Maybe, maybe their, their health isn't doing well and they're wondering, Lord, 
I know, I know I don't come the way I used to. I know I haven't sat with you in a while like I used to, but I'm hurting. Is there a place for me to warm up from the cold night here? My life's a mess. Is there any warmth for me? And I want you to know tonight, brothers and sisters, there are, there's always room at the major. You know what I love about the fact that there was no room for them at the end? That they had to go out to the stable, the man, you know what's nice about that? There's room for everybody there. All the people who feel like there's no room in the inn for them either. Well, there's room out there. All the people who've had doors closed on them in their life and wondered, Jesus, do you have a place for me? There's no room in there. Well, that's okay because he's not in there. He's out in a place where there's room for everyone. Come see the light. Come feel its warmth. Come see where the light points your life to. But today I will close with one last question. I'm not only asking for people and asking of myself to come and see the light and be warmed in it. I'm asking will you take part in the great tradition of carrying the torch you take part in the great tradition done by the great athletes of the faith in the past, carrying on to those in the future. The Lord asks, who will go for me? You take that light today. I want you to not only think about the light of Christ, I want you to think about your role as a bearer of the torch, a carrier of the flame. Because the world is, as it always has been, filled with darkness. Before we sing the silent night, I'm going to ask that you all remember that we'll start once every candle has been lit. It'll go quicker than I think it will. So, as always, we'll take our light. The light will start with the Christ candle. The light that is the light of all men. And again, I ask you to remember to carry the torch, to carry the flame, to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to all who are looking.
light began to grow, did you see how faces lit up? Did you see how it made us shine? Do you feel its warmth? If you want your life to shine, carry the flame of Christ. Go in peace. Bless you. Merry Christmas.